founded on the 13th of August 1914, just days after World War I was declared. The Australian Red Cross has forged its place in our national history as a symbol of selfless community spirit. Ahead of its centenary celebrations, current CEO Robert Tickner joins me now. Robert, welcome. By World War II, the Red Cross had become Australia's largest charitable organisation. How many people are involved these days? Well, first of all, there are something like 600,000 blood donors uh, around the country. Uh, we've probably got 30,000 uh, volunteers and, of course, about 20,000 members. So when you add all that up and remember that we've got 120,000 people who are regular givers to Red Cross uh, every month, that's a lot of Australians. Yeah, indeed. Uh, the Red Cross, of course, is the world's largest charitable or humanitarian movement. Uh, it's been woven into the fabric of Australian history. You state that on your website. It, it's mm. a lovely uh, way to put it because it's just so true. To what extent do you think it's defined Australia as a nation? Well, I think it has provided an important part of our definition as Australians. You know, I was uh, CEO of Red Cross in 2009 at the time of those devastating Victorian bushfires. And I just really saw Australia at its best. Um, you know, we managed to raise $400,000, which was able to flow pretty seamlessly to the people who had suffered and their families. Um, but of course, the work that Red Cross does uh, goes way beyond blood and disasters. You know, these days, <coughs> you may find and do find Red Cross programs in remote Aboriginal communities. You find young people being involved in a, a global campaign to create a treaty to ban the use of nuclear weapons because of international humanitarian law principles. You find us in communities uh, working with marginalised young people who've been in contact with the criminal law, reaching out to older people in the community. It's just a massive humanitarian footprint. And that wouldn't happen were it not for our volunteers and our members and our community supporters. If you look at what Australian Red Cross did 100 years ago uh, to what it does now, there's been quite a significant transformation in the work that it does, hasn't there? Well, that's right. But we still do some of the things that we did um, most of that time. Uh, and I've talked to you about the changes and the different programs we now deliver. But I think some things have been very consistent and one of those things is our commitment to our fundamental principles like impartiality and neutrality. First of all for neutrality it means basically that we just don't get involved in party political fights. We rise above that and try and bring people together and our impartiality really means that we're there for all the people of our country and the people that we work for globally. So it's quite remarkable. You have people working beside each other in Red Cross who may have very different political views or come from a you know, radically different uh, racial or cultural background or come from a huge disparity in ages. You know, I, I know people in Red Cross that are valued uh, supporters in their 90s. And yet on the other hand, I work with some of the most dynamic 18 year old uh, people I've ever met. But we all come together um, because of the love of people and wanting to do practical things, um, working with communities and people to make life better. The Red Cross does recognise that we live in an increasingly complex uh, world with difficult humanitarian challenges. What's the biggest challenge for Australian Red Cross moving forward? Well, to be frank, I think the challenge of getting the resources necessary to do our work. You know, I make the point that if we had, um, you know, half a million Australians who would give up the price of a cup of coffee a day um, by you know, essentially becoming one of our regular uh, donors, our regular givers, by going to our Red Cross website, you know, that is an absolutely massive contribution that people can make if they're not able to be uh, volunteers. But there's also the fact that many older people are starting to you know, uh, realise that a bequest to Red Cross can be absolutely transformational and leave that huge uh, impact uh, you know, when they're gone. So they, the contribution that people make either as members, uh, as volunteers, as staff, because we mustn't forget them, but also as supporters in the community. They're all Red Cross people and we call this mobilising the power of humanity. 
Red Cross says its mission to care for the most vulnerable people in Australia and across the world has never been more relevant. Why is that? Well, you know, if I can be honest, I think that there's a degree of disenchantment in many parts of the world and, and in Australia too, I think, from time to time with some of the political process. People want to believe in ethical values. People want to make a, a contribution to building a better world. And I think that, you know, given the challenges that exist globally uh, with so many of the conflict uh, situations and the uh, challenges through, you know, uh, natural disasters, um, but here, you know, the extent of uh, the struggle that many people have on the margins of society uh, is all part of the focus of Red Cross, wanting a truly inclusive society. So I'm seeing idealistic people, particularly young people, um, coming to Red Cross because that emblem stands for something of enormous integrity and substance, and people want that. For people who want to get involved in the centenary celebrations, what's out there, what's happening next week? Well, <clears throat> there are some uh, celebrations, uh, but always stressing, of course, this is not about just celebrating the past, but building for the future. But we've got some important things happening, like the launch of a centenary history by the Governor-General, Peter Cosgrove, uh, uh, on Tuesday this week. Uh, we've got uh, important uh, celebrations in the government house in Victoria where uh, the then Governor General's wife, Lady Munro Ferguson, uh, back on the 13th of August 1914, literally planted the seed to create Red Cross in Australia. So we've got those things, but a lot of community-based things. I'll be um, in Melbourne on Monday at a local council who's commemorating this centenary with the planting of a symbolic Red Cross rose. But of all these things, the, the thing that excites me most um, is the infusion of young people who really want to get actively involved. And I say too, you know, a lot of people who are retiring um, seeing a new career for themselves as a Red Cross volunteer.